Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint, and I'm here in my garden on a hot June summer day, and um, I want to discuss pruning in the summer, as in fact you can actually prune your trees um, with the goal of actually accomplishing more fruit next year, spring, and summer. And let me explain to you how, but let's um, come in a little closer to my 3-in-1 apple tree that we grafted about two years ago, and it's bearing its first fruit. Come over here. The first thing I want to share with you is if you take a look at the tree trunks, and I usually get um, questions when I'm showing um, the garden, they're like, what kind of rootstock are you using that has such light wood? And what it is, is an Ivory Organics 3-in-1 tree guard paint that I painted from this point down. What I'm doing is basically protecting the heart of the tree um, from sunburn, insects, and rodents. So let me um, show you the label here. It's got a little paint on it, but it reads Ivory Organic. It's a 3-in-1 guard paint. And it says it's a natural tree trunk barrier from damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for use on roses, fruit trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. It's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And it's basically an organic paint product with um, organic oils. And what the paint's doing is it's reflecting the sun in the summer and protecting it from sunburn so it doesn't crack. It's also, um, in the winter, protecting from sun scald. And it also protects from insects, the oils that are in there. And it protects from rodents that may dare to gnaw on the tree, especially in the winter months, um, and try to get to those sugars. And it's got an oil that actually is distasteful and should repel most rodents from the tree. What I want to point out first, and I told you, we grafted this tree about three years ago. Our first graft union is over here, and our second, and our third. And I'm hoping you can actually zoom in here. I'm gonna actually um, bring you a little bit closer so you can see this. So if you take a look over here, You'll see that the first graph union is right there, right in this area. So you can see this here is the rootstock, and then this here is the apple variety that actually bears a red apple. Over here is the second graft union, and this here is the rootstock, and then the graft is from this point up. And that helps to bear the red and green variety apple that we've grafted. And the third union is over here. And let me zoom in right there. And what we've got here is the Granny Smith, which is on the top of the rootstock. And you can see it's basically a, um, it all comes down to one, one root that's supporting three varieties of fruit, which will actually end up cross pollinating with one another. So the three varieties will actually end up, and I've actually done a video on this. So there's a video out there already by Ivory Organics that discusses approach grafting, which you can actually graft any time, preferably spring, summer, and fall. And instead of the other more traditional grafting methods that are usually in the um, late winter. So this actually gives you a larger window, approach grafting. So take a look at that. Um, check out that video. The other thing um, we've also discussed is, um, discussed about fruit trees is it's highly recommended that you have um, diversities of species of fruit trees within your garden to actually improve with cross-pollination. Even if a tree is self-fertile, some apples are actually self-fertile, some apples require a second apple. But regardless, all apples and all avocados and a lot of citrus will actually increase fruit production by cross-pollinating. And that means you just put a different species, like something that's related but different. Um, as we did over here, this one here is our Granny Smith, this one here is a green and red apple, and to my right is just a red apple. So there's three varieties of apple that will be blooming, cross-pollinating with one another, and increasing fruit production as a result. And our first apple, and again, this is year number two, is actually right over here. Hopefully you can zoom in and take a look at this. And this here is a variety we've actually been grafting um, on apple stalks since I was about 13 or 14 years old. We've had this apple right in our family since forever, and I don't know what the variety of um, this apple tree is. It was just something we loved so much that we've been propagating it ever since. So, what I want to talk about is now pruning. When you're in your garden, you actually see this happening in your garden. Take a look at the base of the tree and try to zoom in, and you'll actually notice that there's all of these suckers, is what they call them. They're basically offshoots. So here we are now at the base of the tree, and you'll notice that there are all of these suckers that are um, coming at the root base. And what these suckers are doing, they're actually pretty much sucking the, um, the, the sugars and the nutrients out of the tree. And it's actually impeding with the success that's actually going to the graft unions and the growth that's happening up above it. So it's very important that once you visit your garden, if you actually see some suckers that are going on, these are young enough, I can actually just pinch them off. 
and then here's another and another and be careful um, not to strip the bark all the way down when you rip it try to keep it um, you know with minimal damage to the tree and we'll just take that off and that off and that off and there we go we've just removed all of the suckers um, if the tree had its choice it would actually the rootstock would put all of its energy into its own its own root and its own rootstock and those suckers and actually take away um, the energy that would go into the graft and the, and the selected fruit variety that we're trying to grow here so keep your eyes open for suckers and remove them so that you give your plants all of the um, energy and all the nutrients that you're actually providing your plants with the next step here is you'll notice and now I want you to like generally see this entire apple tree and what you'll see here is this um, my Granny Smith apple has branched quite low about two feet off the ground here's another sucker I'm gonna pinch that off so so this here so this here actually branched about two feet off the ground you can see the branches are low so it's actually gonna continuously branch um, and hopefully bear a lot of flowers and a lot of fruit at a low point within the garden. Our goal is not to create a monster tree. Uh, this one here similarly grew maybe closer to like three feet off the ground and is branching. And again, here's the first apple right there. And then this rootstock on the other hand is about five feet. I'm six feet tall. So this is five feet before it actually decides to branch. Um, and there's no apples. It actually flowered and it looked like it was about to actually make some fruit in this area. Um, but for whatever reason, it didn't hold. It's its second year. So next year, I do expect it to carry fruit, but I don't want the fruit to be this high. So what am I gonna do? And the answer is, you gotta prune your trees. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a look at the graft union, which is in this um, zone right here. And we're gonna select some buds that are in this area. And we want these to actually form the branches so that there's an equal amount of branches at the um, equivalent um, height. So what we're gonna do here is actually remove these ties so the plant will be free. And we're just going to prune it. Um, another point I actually want to make out is where to prune it. So let me actually bring you a little closer. And you'll notice that there's all of these buds on the wood. So there's a bud over here and a bud over there and a bud that's actually going back in to the center of the tree. So we don't want to actually prune here. We want the, the highest bud to be a bud that's actually pointed away from the tree. So we're going to actually select a bud that's pointing in this direction. Um, this one here is pointing towards us, to my left, to my right. So again, we don't want any buds that are going to the right, um, at least not for the top bud where all the energy is going to go because it's going to force the tree to actually grow right back into the center of the canopy when we're trying to actually create a, a, you know, a vase shaped tree with three multi-trunk branches. So. Here's branch number one, branch number two, branch number three. We're looking for a bud that's on this side of the tree, which I've identified one right here. And I'm now just gonna cut it at an angle. And the reason for pruning it at an angle is when the water, if it ever rains here in Southern California, but if it comes, you don't want it to pool at the top and rot the plant. So it's actually here at an angle and actually zoom that in for you. So here we go. So you can see here's the cutting and it's at an angle. I left about a quarter inch, left about a quarter inch to the top so that if this branch grows, this wood will expand and, and heal. And you can actually, it would be another good idea to actually put some ivory organics on the top of it and that'll actually help keep um, insects, especially wood boring insects from getting into um, the center of the tree. Anyways, so here we are. We just removed this entire beautiful branch. I know this looked quite dramatic, but if you subscribe down below, I'll actually um, do another posting in the next probably about six to eight weeks. And then you can actually see how beautiful this is and how this is gonna start matching the rest of the tree. So pruning we've done in the month of June. So summer pruning, the goal ultimately is to create some more branches that are lower and those will create the buds that'll then um, form the flowers in the spring and hopefully support the fruit that we're gonna enjoy next summer. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if so, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on all the other educational Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard videos with gardening tips that we put out at least once a month. Again, thanks for watching and happy gardening.